Hey everybody, listen, um, apologies, I've been getting behind on my emails. I have not been, I have not felt very inspired lately. I mean, I'm not really depressed or anything, but I just haven't felt, I don't know. I haven't felt very inspired lately. Um, another thing too, is I, I'm getting really concerned about uh, saying anything on uh, you know who and tube I mean they're they're not only they're going after my old work now not just my new stuff so all I know is you want my Bible studies you better write me and I'll send you stuff send me an SD card or something at least a 64 gig and make sure it's a fast card please I mean people save a couple dollars and they get these old slow cards and it takes 45 minutes to an hour to download my stuff don't do that no give me a fast card you know doesn't have to be a name brand but you know it doesn't have to be the fastest card but you know I've been doing this for you know years now and I've got a 1500 studies and plus the you know the audios and the videos they take time but a 128 would be better. I've got a bunch of audio, uh, videos that um, you could show family, you know, things like uh, 9, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, yeah, and uh, other things too that uh, shows that everything we've been taught or shown on television is a lie. But uh, yeah, I'm getting to the point where I don't want to say anything on YouTube because they're giving me strikes for all kinds of stuff. I mean, you know, a five-year-old video, you're going to give me a strike? Really? So, yeah, they're watching. And honestly, I'm surprised they haven't deleted the channel, but uh, my guess is they're collecting names for the purge or whatever. So, yeah. But they've known who I am for a long, long time. You know, in 1990 or so, I was getting um, booklets and cassettes, Bible studies from the Church of Israel, Pastor Dan Gaiman in uh, Shell City, S-C-H-E-L-L, -L, City, Missouri. And the packages were being opened. Yeah. Yeah really you know I thought boy that's funny but uh, and then I noticed his phone was being tapped because I met a guy that worked for uh, Southern Bell and we had a talk and he had told me about uh, how you could tell when your phone was being tapped uh, a landline and he says you would hear like a quarter ring I'll go Bing! just a quick little ring and it would right by the bed, the phone, and i pick it up, and I wouldn't hear anything. So when they tapped in your phone, um, you would hear the phone do a quarter ring. Just bing. And there was nobody there. And I'm like, didn't know that. And I talked to this guy, and he told me that uh, that's how you could tell, because he was into all that kind of stuff. I mean, you're talking back in 90, 91, when I found out all this stuff. But, uh, so I took a um, cassette player, took Church of Israel's Bible studies, placed it right by the phone and played it so that they could listen to Bible studies all for whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I did that. So, like I'm a real threat to them, you know. But, uh, well, you know, they hate Christians. They hate Christ. They hate Christians. They hate the name of Jesus. They hate the name of Jesus. That's why they try to fool everybody into throwing that name away. So, But uh, now you know why I haven't really been doing much in the way of uh, Bible studies. And, you know, I apologize. But hey, I got 1,500 plus Bible studies, you know, covers virtually all the major subjects. You know, so what can I tell you?
Plus, I went back to work full time. So, but really, I, I just haven't felt very inspired. And uh, like I say, I'm not really depressed, but I just haven't, I just haven't felt much. So, all right. Uh, so let's, let's get going with the Bible lesson. Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Somebody has written me and uh, asked me um, about the sacred name stuff. And uh, I just, I'm pretty disgusted with these so-called people that think that they know some secret name of God. And unless you use that secret name of God uh, that only they know, that he's not going to answer your prayers. Hmm. So let's take a look at what the Bible says about the name of God. Now, some people say Yahweh, others say Yahweh, uh, Jehovah. You know, does anybody really know God's name? Well, but that's, uh, we'll cover that in a minute. Now, this uh, church, so called, that's pushing all this junk has a female pastor. Yeah, I call them priestess toots. Um, you know, let me tell you something. In the Bible, there was Anna, a prophetess, who was in the temple during the time of uh, when Jesus was born. There was Deborah, who was a prophetess, and she was also a judge in the book of Judges. This was after the days of Joshua. You know, you had Moses, and then you had Joshua, and then you had the days of the judges. So Deborah was a prophetess and a judge. She was the ruler. And then you had Miriam, who was Moses' sister. As far as I know, those are the only three prophetesses in the Bible. And, you know, let's face it. The Lord wanted men to lead the home and to lead the church. You know, he wanted priests, not priestess, priestesses, like a lot of the satanic religions had. So, you know, and it, it isn't that women are of any less value, but it means that they have a different function. I don't know how many of you have been in the army, but the general has a different function than a private. And the captain has a different function function than a sergeant. Women have a different function. But if the Lord cannot find a man whose heart is pure to do his will, he can and will have a woman um, prophet or judge, perhaps. But they are few and far between. But this particular so-called pastor and, and the, Paul even says in the King James Bible that, um, you know, he, he didn't want to suffer a woman to teach. Let's, ta let's look that up. All right, that's in 1 Timothy 2.12. But I suffer, or allow, but I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. Uh there were no women pastors in the New Testament. Men were responsible. And men are going to have to answer to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob when the time comes. And if a woman is smart, she'll say, well, 
Lord, I'm sorry I was doing this wrong, but you'll have to talk to my husband about it since I was uh, obedient to him. Yeah. And then he's going to have to give an answer. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, or uh, if I was taught something wrong about the Bible, you're going to have to talk to my pastor. You know, uh, that's... <laughs> I wouldn't want I don't want to be responsible I mean really I've never liked responsibility which is why I'm uh, very concerned about teaching I never wanted the teaching I never wanted to be a Bible teacher never well I kind of wanted to be a high school Bible teacher but it's a responsibility and if I'm teaching stuff wrong one day I'm gonna have to give an account to the Lord and that's a scary thing. Yeah, really. So you had, to my knowledge, three prophetesses, female prophets. All the rest were male. But another thing, too, this female uh, pastor, she's part of the Pentecostal movement, and she teaches that unless you have the evidence of the speaking in tongues you that's the evidence of the Holy Spirit and that you're saved and if you don't have that well then I guess you're not saved so if you don't slither on the ground and uh, you're not saved I mean really you know and in the days of the book of Acts I think it's Acts chapter 4 when they were speaking in tongues, they were speaking in languages that everybody could understand. Everybody was hearing them in their own language. Oh, I was wrong. Acts chapter 2, not 4. Uh, verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Didn't know they had Hondas back then, huh? Uh, yeah, I know. Don't give up your day job. Uh, you're, Bob, you're not going to be on uh, The Tonight Show or anything. So, Verse 2, And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a mighty, a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues, tongues as the spirit gave them utterance um, they were not spouting gibberish as we're about to find out and there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews devout men out of every nation under heaven now when this was noise abroad the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in their own language language tongues was language not Babble. Blah, 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 blah. That's not tongues. Somebody that never spoke Spanish before was speaking Spanish or Greek or Latin or Hebrew or whatever. And they all were amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born Parthians and Medes and Elamites and dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia uh, P-H-R-Y-G-I-A and Pamphylia in Egypt and parts of Libya about Cyrene and strangers of Rome Jews and proselytes Cretes and Arabians we do hear them speak in the tongues the wonderful works of God yeah, they were speaking in all the different languages, preaching to them the, the gospel of Jesus Christ. They were not slithering on the floor going, blah, 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 blah. that's not tongues. That's of the devil. That's of Satan. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 27, it says, If any man speak in an unknown tongue... Let it, by, let it be by two, or at the most by three, and that by course, 
So, you know, they're not all three going, <laughs> no. One says something, then the other, and then the other. That's by course. And that by course, and let one interpret. But if there be no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church and let them speak to himself and to God. So if they're in a church and they're doing and there's no interpreter, it says shut up. If there's no interpreter, they're supposed to shut up. That's how you know that Pentecostal churches that do this stuff are of the devil. Because the Bible right here tells you if you speak in an unknown tongue, only two or three, one by one, and there has to be an interpreter or they should shut up. Period. But I've never been to a Pentecostal church that followed this. So that's why I know they're of the devil. Because I trust Paul more than I trust people going blah, blah, blah. They make me sick. And then they'll say, oh, well, if you, if you drink any deadly thing, you're not going to die. Well, let me hand you a bottle of ammonia and say, drink it. And then they'll say, well, we can't tempt the Lord God. I would love to uh, put a bunch of poison in their uh, punch when they're having their breakfast or lunch or whatever and uh, watch them uh, see what happens. See if the Lord, if they're uh, living with no dead, drinking no deadly thing happens. But I'd probably spend the rest of my earthly life in prison, but... Uh, I don't know. Maybe it'd be worth it. I don't know. It's a thought. It's a thought. All right. So, do these people know the sacred name of God? Well, first of all, you got a woman pastor, which is unbiblical. Okay. And then it's a Pentecostal tongue twister thing, which is unbiblical. So right there, there's two strikes. Now, in baseball, when you get three strikes, you're out, which I was never really a fan of baseball, but my dad loved baseball, and he was actually drafted in the minors. Um, but then the Japanese decided to uh, bomb Pearl Harbor, and that was the end of that. So, you know, he was went in the Army along with, Millions of other people, I guess. So, but uh, baseball and all that, what a distraction. So, let's see what it says. You know, uh, we're going to get to it, but, you know, there, Paul went to heaven and heard words which were unlawful for a sinful fleshly man to utter. Do you know there's words that in the flesh we're not allowed to say? Yeah. Do you think that God's name's one of them? Maybe. I don't know. We, I, I mean, I'm going to go through this. Now, in Genesis 15 and verse 1, we read, After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram. Now, remember, Abram was his original name. God changed his name to Abraham, which means father of many nations god made a covenant with abraham and then his made a, uh with his son re renewed uh made another covenant with his son isaac and then made another covenant with his grandson jacob whose name he changed to israel which means prince of, prince with god or rules with god so he said um after these things, the word of the Lord came into Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am. I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Genesis 15, 7. And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of Ur of the Chaldees to give this land to inherit. Uh, Genesis 17, 1. And when Abram was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou 
Perfect. Oh, uh, I am. In Genesis 28, 13, And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord, God of Abraham thy father, and the God of Isaac. The land wherein thou liest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed, seed as in children. So if you want to make sure the Lord knows who you're referring to, you can, you know, the Lord God of Abraham and the God of Isaac. Uh, it, God will know who you are referring to because Satan is not the God of Abraham and Satan is not the God of Isaac. Okay. How about Exodus chapter 3? Verse 6, Moses, God speaking to Moses. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. You want to know who to pray to? Pray to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. There you go. Do you need to know his sacred name? No. And believe me, these deceivers that, that spout gibberish, what they call tongues, with female pastors, they're not of God. They are of the devil. Whatever they're trying to teach you, or whatever they're trying to sell you, don't buy it. Throw it in the garbage. Say, the Lord rebuke thee. Let's read Exodus chapter 3 real quick. At least part of it. Verse 1. Now remember, Moses is going to go to uh, Egypt to deliver Israel. And if you don't know that story, you need to quit going to churches and sit down and read your Bible. The Bible starts in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning... That's what you need to do. In the beginning. You need a Bible from in the beginning. That's what I did when I came, when the Lord finally got, got a hold of me and grabbed me back. I bought a King James Bible and I opened it up to the, the beginning and that's what I did. And I didn't quit wait, reading until uh, I got to Je uh, Revelation 22. Verse 1. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord. Now, sometimes the angel of the Lord speaks in the first person as the same as God. So a lot of Bible scholars believe this angel of the Lord is Christ before he came in the flesh. So, I got to study on that, if you're interested. And the angel of the Lord appeared on him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. Yeah, that's kind of funny. Wait a minute, this thing's burning, but it's not, it's not burning up. What's up? I want to check this out. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Draw not nigh hither, put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place wherein thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, Listen to this. This is God speaking to Moses. I am. I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. This is God speaking, telling him, I'm the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land 
unto a good land, and a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is coming to me, and I have also seen the oppression, the oppression wherein the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And Moses said unto God, Moses said unto God, Who am I? Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? And he said, Certainly I will be with thee. God said, Certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, ye shall serve God upon this mountain. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers hath sent me unto you. Hey guys, uh, the God of Abraham sent me to you guys. Well, that's the Bob translation. And they shall say to me, What is his name? Uh, okay, you Moses, you God sent you, but what's his name? Yeah, what is his name? Uh, good question. What shall I say unto them? God gives an answer. Verse 14. And God said unto Moses, I am. I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. What? Come on, God, give me your sacred name. Because unless you, you know, unless I say that sacred name, you're not going to hear my prayers and, and you're not going to do what I need you to do. I got to know your sacred name. No. And you got to realize God loved Moses. And Moses asked him and he said, I am that I am. I am hath sent me unto you. And God said, Moreover unto Moses, Thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, hath sent me unto you. This is my name forever. This is my name forever. This is my name forever. How long is that? Uh, forever. And this is my memorial unto all generations. That's in Exodus chapter 3, verse 15. Do you want to know God's sacred name? How about I am? Yeah. This is what he told Moses. Yeah. Guess what, people? In John chapter 8, He's having a discourse with the religious leaders, if you know what I mean. I can't say the you-know-who word. So let's take a look at John chapter 8. Verse 51, Jesus saying, Verily, verily, I say to you, if man keep my sayings, he shall never see death. Then said the Jews unto him, Now we know that thou hast a devil. Abraham is dead, and the prophets, and thou sayest, If a man keep my saying, he shall never taste of death. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead, and the prophets are dead? Whom makest thou thyself? Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my father that honoreth me, of whom ye say that he is your God. Yet ye have not known him, but I know him. And if I should say I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. But I know him and keep his sayings. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? 
Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. I am. Then took they up stones to cast at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. Take a look at Judges, the book of Judges, chapter 13 and verse 18. And the angel of the Lord said unto him. Now this guy, uh, whoever it is here, asked the angel of the Lord what his name was. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Why askest thou thus after my name, seeing it is secret? I got a secret name. So why, who are these so-called churches trying to are they trying to seek out something that is secret? Are they, you know, these people are trying to make you think that they have more knowledge than those people that wrote that were filled with the Holy Spirit from the Bible. They don't. They're deceivers. They're liars. They're antichrists. They're devils. Don't pay attention to these people. In Revelation 19, 16, speaking of Jesus, it says, And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. Uh, yeah. I think I'll believe my Bible over a, a, some female priestess toot going blue, 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 blue. In Revelation 19.12, his eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. A name written that no man knew but he himself. Yeah. In the book of John 20, verse 31, but these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. You know, that's why they don't, they hate, they despise the name of Jesus. They hate it. They hate the name of Jesus. Because we have life through his name. They got all kinds of arguments. Oh, there's no J in Hebrew. Well, that's right. But, um, uh, so I guess if there's no J's, I, I guess that means Jerusalem doesn't exist or the uh, Jews don't exist, right? Because there's no J. So Jews don't exist, right? No J for Jesus, no J for Jews. Uh, yeah. How about Revelation 2.12? He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna and will give him a white stone and in the stone a new name written those that get the stone are going to get a new name a new name written which no man knoweth saving he that receiveth it wow so you know ugh There's absolutely nothing wrong with the name of Jesus. And you better believe that when the, 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 the uh, man of sin, the false prophet, the, the Antichrist, the beast comes, I will almost, almost, almost guarantee you his name. They're going to call him Yeshua. You watch. You wait and see. They're already, you know... Do you know in the uh, complete Jewish Bible, a so-called Messianic Bible, in Revelation 22, it identifies, well, they, they say it's not Jesus, but they say Yeshua is the morning star. And then when you go to Isaiah 14, where in the King James it talks about Lucifer falling from heaven, they replace the name Lucifer with morning star. 
So Yeshua is the morning star who fell from heaven and is going down to the pit of hell to be covered with worms. And then they laugh at you clowns that use the sacred name garbage. His name is Jesus. There are 5,000 partial Greek manuscripts of the New Testament. There are zero Hebrew ones. Zero. And the Dead Sea Scrolls, ignore them. The you-know-whos are in control of those things, and they won't let any Christian scholar that I would trust, anyways, look at them and examine them. They have complete control over them. And they're the ones that are telling you what they actually say. Oh, yeah, well, you can't look at them, but we're going to tell you what they say. Uh, wrong. I, I wouldn't believe them. Read John chapter 8 if you think the you-know-whos are uh, trustworthy. Yeah. Where Jesus calls a certain group of people children of the devil. Yeah. And you want to trust these people? You want to believe them? If you want to use a name that's in the New Testament, how about when Gabriel... In Matthew chapter 1 and verse 23, behold, well, Matthew says, behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Can we find this in the Old Testament? Sure. Isaiah 7, 14. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Now, whether you spell it with an E or an I, it doesn't matter. Emmanuel is Emmanuel. But guess what? The modern Bibles will tell you that, uh, oh, well, that's not, the word virgin really isn't virgin. No, 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 no. It just means young woman. See, they want you to think Mary really wasn't a virgin. See, they, they, they don't believe the Bible. They don't believe it. No. And, you know, if you want to use a, uh, a name, New and Old Testament, use Emmanuel. Use I Am. Use the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Use the name of Jesus. There's nothing wrong with it. These, these devils that tell you they got secret knowledge and they know God's secret name and, and unless you use his secret name, he's not going to answer your prayers. They're devils. Stay away from them. You think they know more than the people that wrote the Bible? They don't. They know more about doing evil. Yeah, because that's their job, doing evil. And uh, you want to listen to a church where they slither on the ground and go, blah, 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 blah. well, God said, if there's no interpreter, let them keep quiet. Let them keep silence. Shut up. Yeah. They're of the devil, people. Don't listen to these devils. So, and what's the most hated name among the you-know-whos? Jesus. They hate that name. Absolutely hate it. So, what can I tell you? That's why they want to get rid of that name. They want to get rid of it because they know there's power in that name. People cast out devils in that name. People don't get saved and cast out devils in the name of Yeshua. Let's read Matthew 21, verse 23. And when he, Jesus, was come into the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came unto him as he was teaching and said, By what authority doest thou these things? And who gave thee this authority? And Jesus answered and said unto them, I also will ask you one thing, which if ye tell me, I and likewise will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, whence was it? From heaven or of men? And they reasoned with themselves, saying, If we shall say from heaven, he will say unto us, 
why did ye not then believe him? Yeah, if John came from heaven, why didn't you guys, why didn't you clowns believe him? But if we shall say of men, we fear the people, for all hold John as a prophet. And the answer Jesus has said, we cannot tell. Uh, yeah, we don't know. And he said unto them, Jesus, neither tell I you by what authority I do these things. Now, Jesus is getting ready to tell him a, a parable here. But what think ye? A certain man had two sons. And I believe these two sons represent Judah and Israel. A certain man had two sons, and he came to the first and said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. He answered and said, I will not, but afterward he repented and went. And I believe this represents Israel, because Israel went into adult, uh, 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 spiritual adultery. They went into idolatry, uh, and they were unfaithful. And in Jeremiah 3.8, God divorced them. In Jeremiah 31.31, 31, he said that he would do a new covenant, not a renewed covenant. You know, not the covenant that didn't work the first time with the law. The law doesn't work. You want grace. Law doesn't work for salvation. If there was a law that could give you salvation, God would have given it to you. No, you need grace. It's not a renewed covenant. It's a new, N-E-W, covenant. A certain man had two sons, and he came to the first and said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. He answered and said, I will not, but afterward he repented and went. That's Israel, my opinion. And he came to the second and said, likewise, and he answered and said, I go, sir, and went not. That represents Judah. See, Judah pretended, well, Judah was faithful for a while, but then she fell away. Whither of them twain, the two, did the will of his father? And they said unto him, the first. Jesus said unto him, verily I say unto you, the publicans, the Republicans, right? Oh, I'm sorry. The publicans are uh, basically the tax collectors, the IRS agents. Ministry of Revenue. The Republicans, right? Verily I say to you that the publicans and the harlots, the whores, the prostitutes, that the publicans and the harlots go in the, into the kingdom of God before you. Ooh. The tax collectors and the whores are going to go into the kingdom before the the unit the religious leaders? Yeah, you know the who's. I can't say that word. I say that word and I get in trouble. Thank you, YouTube. For John came unto you in the way of righteousness, and ye believed him not. But the publicans and the harlots believed him, and ye, when ye had seen it, repented not afterward that ye might believe him. Here another parable. There was a certain householder which planted a vineyard and hedged it round about and digged a wine press in it and built a tower and let it out to husbandmen and went into a far country. Who are these husbandmen? God's people. The priests. And when the time of the fruit drew near, he sent his servants to the husbandmen that they might receive the fruits of it. And the husbandmen took his servants, the servants of the Lord, and beat one, and killed another, and stoned another. Again he sent other servants more than the first, and they did unto them likewise. Guess what, people? If you were a, 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 a prophet, you usually had a very short lifespan, because God sent his ser uh, servants, the prophets, to preach repentance and judgment upon a wicked nation. They didn't want to hear it, so they killed them. Yeah, a lot of times. I mean, look at what happened to the apostles. Ten out of twelve apostles were killed for their faith. Paul also. What about Stephen? What is he, chop liver? Yeah. And the husbandman took his servants and beat one and killed another and stoned another. And again he sent other servants more than the first, and they did unto them likewise. But last of all, he sent unto them his son... Christ, 
saying, They will reverence my son. But when the husbandmen saw the son, they said among themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and let us seize on his inheritance. Yeah, let's kill this guy, and then we're going to take what's his. And they caught him and cast him out of the vineyard and slew him. Isn't that what they did? Yeah. When the Lord therefore of the vineyard cometh, what shall what will he do unto those husbandmen? They said unto him, He will miserably destroy those wicked men, and will let out his vineyard unto other husbandmen, which shall render him the fruits in their seasons. Jesus saith unto them, Did ye never read in the scriptures? The stone. I did a Bible study on the stone. Christ is the stone, the rock. The stone which the builders rejected, the same has become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore I say unto you, Jesus speaking, saying, Therefore I say unto you, who's he speaking to? The you know who's, the religious leaders. Therefore say I unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you. The kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof. What nation? The Greeks. This is why the New Testament was written in Greek not Hebrew. The kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. All those churches in the book of Revelation, the seven churches, all of those were in Greece. Thessalonians, Greece. Philippians, Greece. You know, Colossians, Greece. Those are books in the Bible, by the way, in the New Testament, if you don't know it. The New Testament churches were mostly from Greece. But you know who drove the Christians out of Jerusalem? Yeah. The kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. 5,000 partial manuscripts of the New Testament written in Greek fulfills this prophecy. There are zero Hebrew New Testaments. Zero. Not a one. Zero. Null. Not a. zippity doo Jesus speaking, The kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. Greece spread the gospel all over Eastern Europe. You ever heard of the Orthodox Church? Russian Orthodox Church? Greek Orthodox Church? Well, there was a time they were faithful, but I've heard it's not true anymore. But there you go. You want to know the sacred name of God? Emmanuel. Jesus, who is the Christ, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Use those terms. God will know who you're talking about. Well, trust me, he'll know. But the sacred name people want you to go back to the Hebrew roots which God said, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you. God took their kingdom away from them because they were unfaithful, deceivers, liars, hypocrites. Look up the word hypocrite in a, in a search. See how many times Jesus called them hypocrites in the, uh, in the New Testament. And who was he speaking to? He wasn't talking to Pilate, the Romans. No. He was talking to you-know-who, called them hypocrites, liars, serpents, children of the devil. But the sacred name Hebrew Roots people want us to go back to them. You want to go back to them? Go for it, buddy boy, girly girl. I don't care. My job's to warn you. That's it. What you do with the message, hey, that's on you. But you know what? If one day you're at the great white throne judgment and you're looking down at the lake of fire you'll know that you uh, made the wrong decision you know I don't claim to have all the answers 
But I'll tell you what, what's in the Bible, I would like to think that I have a fairly decent understanding of it, you know, so ignore those Hebrew roots, sacred name heretics. Ignore them. They're devils. Stay away from them. They don't even know what God's name is, but they want you to think they do. Oh, we have secret knowledge. That garbage comes from the well, I can't even, I don't I can't even say it. The CHA bad movement. Yeah, that's where all this garbage comes from. The same people Jesus called hypocrites and children of the devil. Yeah. John the Baptist called them serpents. You think John knew what he was talking about? I think so, but hey, that's just me. So, all righty. Um, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor. Amen.